Hi everyone. In the last video, we created a REST API using AWS Lambda and the API Gateway. So AWS Lambda, where you can have your API backend and you can write that backend code in Python, in I guess in Java, Node.js, those are the languages you can write. And it acts like a typical backend. You know, you can connect from AWS Lambda to let's say database. You can connect to other service or API like GPT-3 and all these kinds of things, right? So as a user, you're going to access some resource, let's say this slash customer, and make request to the API gateway. API gateway will be configured to serve that particular request and will pass that request to let's say AWS Lambda. So uh, let me show you what we did, right? So we had created, yeah, this is the uh, post request that we tried, but before even that, let's look at, right? So this was our code. So this is working post method. What it does, it simply receives a string called input string. It splits that particular string and counts the words whose length is more than, let's say, two characters. That's what it is doing. So if I execute, so this is the sentence, let's say string we have. If I make a request, you can see count is equal to three because it has three words, one, two, and three, uh, whose length is more than two characters. Now, what I wanted to show you in this particular video is how do we secure those APIs, okay? How do we add some authentication or authorization? So the one of the popular approach with the AWS is using the uh, AWS key or authorization key. So we can create the keys for the API, right? And those keys, you need to pass while making a request. So you can, you know, create the API key. Let's say we can create API key. We can call it, let's say, YT key or YouTube kind of demo we are making. We can save that key and we choose the auto generate. So if I click on show, this is the key. Now we can configure this key to be, uh, you know, used with the API what we have. So if you go back to again, let's say the API that we have, this is the API that we have, which has, let's say currently we have here post method. And what we can do, if you go to the method request and you see API key required, here we can, from false, we can make it true. Now, this is going to require some API key. And then since we have made some changes, we have to deploy that API again. And let's say we are using the default stage, we click on deploy. Now this is going to take maybe some 30 seconds to one minute actually to uh, reflect the changes that uh, what we have actually made. And so if I go and try again here, it is still working because it's going to take maybe those 30 seconds or something. Meanwhile, uh, is there anything that, uh, you know, I guess yeah, this is the key that we have created. Let's wait for a couple of seconds and we will see whether it, okay, it's still, uh, you know, able to make a request without any key or authorization. Still making, I could have paused the video, but let's see how much time it takes, whether it's like 30 seconds or even more than that, we can see. Okay, now it seems to be giving a forbidden. Now that changes has been, you know, deployed and those things are activated. Now we are not able to make a request because now, uh, you know, we don't have that authorization key. So before even we use that key, there is a concept called usage plan. So if we go to the, you know, this is our API interface, like, right? so if you're not sure, like how to go to the API, you can let's say search for the API gateway. You can go to the API gateway. And then you should see all the APIs that you have created. This is the API that we created, YouTube demo API. If you click on that API, you will land here. You can see this is called resource. This is our resource. And these are the methods that we have currently. We have only one method. And you can see the details about that particular method. Now, same way, you can see the API keys because we created one key. And you can also see usage plans. So usage plan is something, you know, you can, uh, this is what it actually helps you to decide. Let's say one particular key, how many requests, uh, your user can make with those particular key because any service you can have there will be multiple tier maybe let's say a trial user or it could be a regular user or premium user right so you can decide this particular user can make only 5000 requests so those all kinds of things you can create with a usage plan so it will be clear let's say when I click on the create usage plan let's call it YT plan okay. and you can put a description if you want which is not a compulsory now this, these are the things right when you make a usage plan, as I told you, here you got a chance to decide, you know, how many requests per second they can make. So let's say they can make 100 requests per second. That's the limit that you're going to set so that you don't, they don't abuse your API. Again, the burst is one of the concepts in this throttling. Uh, so burst is like how many concurrent requests at a time it can handle. So though you are allowing, let's say, 100 requests per second, 
but what within that fraction of second or let's say in few milliseconds all the 100 requests come so you might not be able to hand, uh, handle right so maybe let's say we put a 50 here so it means that at any moment now that moment could be some milliseconds or something right so we are only allowing 50 requests at a time so they have a choice to make 100 requests over the period of that one second but at a time we can handle only 50 if it comes more than 50 at one moment we're going to drop them so even uh, I just, uh, you know, if you want to re read more about what is this throttling, what is this rate and burst, I came across this particular, you know, link where it is trying to explain with, uh, you know, example. So I will put this particular link into the description of the video so that you go and, you know, understand like what exactly is throttling and all this thing, right? Uh, so since we put the rate number of requests per second, we also put how many concurrent requests they can make and we can decide one quota. Let's say 100,000 requests they can make a month. So this okay these are the hundred thousand requests they can make one and we go to the next now what it is doing so we can add an api stage since we created one plan which has those details how many requests it can make now we can decide where do we want to attach this particular api uh, the plan we created so we can select our api so our api is youtube demo api this is where we want to attach it. and we will choose one of the stage we have which is the default and then we Okay, now that plan is now attached to our particular this uh, thing. If you click on the next, you can add your API key because you did two things. You added a plan, you added the, uh, you know, the API endpoint, but where is the key, which is actually, you know, uh, the user will be sending. So we can add that key and you can even search keys name. So we have this YT key something, right? So yeah, so this is the key we had created. Now we got and we click on done. So now all this three, so, so what all things we did, right? We created the key, we created the plan. Then inside the plan, we put, put both the thing. We put the key that is going to be used. And we also put the resource is nothing but the API. You can even configure individual method, but let's say we did it at API level. Now, uh, I think it will still take some time to reflect. We don't need to deploy API again. That's what my guess. Let's try and see. And if I make a request now, Okay, it is still a forbidden, right? So uh, let's pick up our key and try to make a request. So let's go to the key. This is our API, right? And if you go to our API keys section, this is our YT key. Show and let's copy this key that we can send. So to send that key, if you go to the headers, okay, if you type X here, you will, okay, in the headers, there's something called X API key. So if I put X hyphen API, you'll see this, this suggestion will come x api key this is the key that you need to pass and then you put our key here and then now send now see it started working so this is how you can secure so for every customer you can create the key and you can decide or you can create different plans for those different customers right this way you can manage your subscription or whatever service uh, you have and as i mentioned you can also control how many requests they can make in per second kind of thing so this is how uh, you know uh, you can secure i hope you have watched the earlier video where we created this you know this lambda function api gateway and all this thing and we saw uh, you know we uh, we got into the lot of troubles and eventually we you know troubleshoot all those uh, things and made api working one more thing i wanted to show you maybe let's see if i can uh, reproduce this thing so if you go to our api let's say this is our yt key we want to go to the api let's go to the api I will show you some error that usually we face. I saw online a lot of people have posted for that error and even I have faced multiple times. So if I go to the post request here, if I go to this, uh, let's say integration request. So this is use Lambda proxy integration. Sometimes this checkbox is not clear. So if I hover and see what exactly it means, it says that the request will be proxied and the Lambda will request details available. Okay, so there is one event object that we see here, right? This one that particular checkbox is actually passing this event uh, body here so if you go to let's say the monitor section right and uh, this is also we saw in the last video if you go to this monitor section we can see all the request uh, that is coming right let me again put code here so that you know we are talking about this event object this one because it has all this detail and we are printing that event object right so let's look at our any request so if i go here so you see, you see, this is what we are printing here. That is our, we have seen already in the last video. This is that event object. And I guess that particular checkbox is determining to, you know, pass or not. So uh, let's do one thing. I will uncheck it. Okay. And uh, since I have unchecked it, let's deploy it again. And we will wait for 30 seconds and we will see, uh, you know, does API works fine or not, right? And we will again see what we get here when we are printing those event object. 
Now, meanwhile, if you want to again have a look what is inside the event object, we can go here. Let's say I search for a Python beautifier and we can see what exactly the event object. And that is important object because that's where you can extract all the things coming. So this is our resource name. Then this is our path method type is a post. A lot of header information you can see. When you pass something in the query, this is where those query parameters comes actually. Maybe I should create one small video that how to pass the query parameters. But let's you know uh, close this one, this one. Okay, now you see the body. This body is nothing but what we are sending from here, Postman. This is what, right? So that event object contains all this information. Now let's try to make request again because we have, you know, uh, uncheck that checkbox and see what happens. It is still working. So I'm not sure that error is going to, but I hope that it has to do something with that error. Uh, the error that uh, we saw. Maybe we can still wait for a meanwhile. Meanwhile, I will show you something else also. So if you go to, again, API, you can test API from, let me go to API again. This is the API, right? If you go to the post method here, you see you test. You can test your API from here also. So the same thing we are making from the postman. Let's see, you can copy that thing and you can paste here your request body and you can test it, right? And you see, we got the error. Now that thing started functioning. Let's make request from here also so you can see what I actually mean. We got some error. Why? Because uh, first of all, event body, it is not able to find. So the event object itself, we are not sure what it is getting. So let's go and check what we are getting in the event object. So if I go here and, uh, you know, look at the recent request, you see we got this error. So what we got? So when we printed, we got this thing. So when everything is fine, when we have the checkbox on, you see this particular event, whole event object gets. But if we don't put the checkbox that what we just saw, I will, we will again see that one. We get this kind of, you know, plain, uh, you know, uh, we get this kind of a plain body, they think, right? So it doesn't have any information. And even uh, I saw a lot of places, for example, you will see the, you know, AWS Lambda or something, you know, AWS API post method event object empty, something like that, event object. Yeah, event object empty is in AWS. So this is related to Node.js, but it's applicable to us. and. You know, many, this this is what that you need to make that checkbox. So if you find some this error, you're going to came across because I saw a lot of people actually got this particular error. Even I have faced multiple times this error. Just look at this is the same error. You will get something like that, the key error. Okay. Now go back to again our API and uh, go back here. Go to integration request and now click again that use Lambda proxy. Okay. Let it reflect. Let's deploy again. It takes actually more than 30 seconds, I guess, to reflect uh, everything, right? So it will take some time to reflect that thing. I guess I just showed you, right, how to, you know, uh, you can also try and see what every, uh, all other tabs, right? We saw this particular tab where it is passing that event object, the method request. Here we do this true false kind of thing, whether the key is required or not. The other thing is important. Yeah, we can test from here itself. Uh, so let's try from here itself first. How much time it is going to take so if that changes get reflect then we should see this uh, yeah now it is working so let me go and again hit from here no it is error why do okay it is seems to be from here i test okay maybe let's say it takes some time to access outside or something like that because when you even access here, you don't require any authentication because it, you're just there on that API gateway. Let's wait for a couple of seconds and we should see this one is also working. Not yet. Let's wait. Okay, now it started working, you see. So these are the things you're going to came across. So actually, uh, both the videos got lengthy, but I wanted to show you what are all the problems or troubles that you might came across, right? These all things and uh, this will, you definitely will come, I'm sure. The one that I, uh, you know, shown you here. So I hope you found this video useful. There are a lot of things we can do with this API gateway, like passing the query parameters. Maybe we can, you know, insert the lambda rather than having this simple thing. Maybe we can make a GPT-3 request, something like that. Maybe I will cover in the next video or whenever I get time, I won't say the next video. But definitely I'm thinking to, you know, extend these videos to the more useful functionalities. So these two videos were just introductory, creating the API, both gate, post, and then, you know, uh, having authorization key where you can decide 
how many requests user can make and when do you want to cap those requests and all these things. So I hope you found this video useful. Thank you.